Hi guys, it's me again, Charles Norman from Sports Solution LLC. We are the creators of Athletic SOS. It is a software platform designed to help high school athletes find perfect opportunities for getting athletic scholarships. And we try to make sure everyone can use the system. So as always, at the end of this video, I'll give you a code and instruction so you can use our system for one month. See if it makes sense for you. Maybe it's all you need. Most people need to go at least three to six months to get everything that they need to get some traction on getting an athletic scholarship. We give you the first month. There's no obligation to go any further. It might be everything that you need to do. And if you want to move forward, we have the lowest pricing period for the best, in our opinion, the, the best uh, platform for getting it done. One of the things I'm always harping on is knowing your options and opportunities because it's the one thing that you can kind of control. If you have enough information, you know where to start looking so that you can find opportunities. Again, I say every single year, there's a bunch of empty seats that aren't being filled on college uh, rosters every single year. And I know those pe there are people around, there's, there's student athletes around that want to fill those spots they just don't know they exist. And so we make sure you know exist and we teach you how to get some traction and start moving forward on getting recruited. In this one I want to talk about emerging sports. So emerging sports at the NCAA level and that's where you'll find them um, are sports that aren't don't have a championship uh, opportunity with NCAA. They're sort of experimenting to see if it has uh, any kind of traction that they can get enough schools involved and then if it does reach that level they'll make it a championship sports and then they'll get organized uh, move forward. So emerging sports are for women uh, athletics at the collegiate level. And uh, it's just the way it is. There, there are no men. And the NCAA, to their defense, have had the biggest dilemma always because of men's football. Because of football and the number of, of uh, males that play football, it's very difficult for them to even up the rest of the sports to make sure they have enough uh, women matching the number of men playing at the collegiate level. And so they're always looking for new ways to encourage uh, females to play sports and to try to uh, play at the collegiate level. So emerging sports are for women's sports right now. There's no reason they can't do male. They just, I just haven't heard of any. And so an emerging sport is a sport that does not have championships. It has to have at least 20 schools participating in it before it can get voted on as an emerging sport. And it really needs another 10 to sort of sponsor it, sort of bring it up and say, hey, we want to make sure we get an opportunity to grow this, if that's okay. And then so there's committees in the NCAA that vote on which sports are going to get added. And then it starts moving forward. They have 10 years to get to 40 schools. If they can get to 40 schools in 10 years, it will be voted on again. And once it becomes a regular sport, it sort of sticks around. More schools start picking up on it. And that's kind of how it, it goes. That's a, that's a quick version of it. And so the important piece of this, though, is that emerging sports for, uh, for women offer you the same scholarship opportunities as some other sports. Now, emerging sports are considered equivalency sports. Now, we've had this before. If you watched any of my videos, there's headcount sports and there's equivalency sports. The difference being headcount sports, you get a full ride. At least at the D1 level, you will get a full ride scholarship. Every other sport is an equivalency sport. So for head count sports, there's only two for guys. There's football and there's basketball. For women, there's basketball, volleyball, gymnastics, and tennis. That's it. Those are the head count sports. So if you hear somebody that runs track and field or plays soccer and they say they got an athletic scholarship, it may or may not be full ride. Basically, for an equivalency sport, there's a certain number of scholarships that are given per college and they have to split it amongst all of the athletes. So depending on the sport and how many athletes need to play in that sport for that college, they split them up. Maybe one or two kids that are so great, they get full rides, but that's very unusual. Usually you're getting a partial scholarship. So you guys need to understand that. So emerging sports, you can still get a full ride, even though it's not an official NCAA sport, you can still get an athletic scholarship opportunities and a lot of people sleep on them. So let me give you a couple of the sports uh, that are up right now that are emerging sports for, for women. Uh, there is rugby, there is the triathlon, there is equestrian, and then there is tumbling and acrobatics is a new one. Um, so those are the new ones that are sort of out right now that you can start looking into. The great thing about the emerging sports 
it almost, sometimes I'm looking at it, it almost feels like it's a combination. So let's take triathlon. We had uh, track and field, we had cycling, we have swimming, but triathlon is sort of a combination of all of those. But you don't see it at very many high schools, which makes it kind of reason I want to bring it up. But let's say you're a pretty good swimmer or you're a pretty good uh, cycler, cycler or you're pretty good at uh, long distance running whatever, you know, one of those things, but you're not great at it. You might not be able to get an athletic scholarship there, but here's an opportunity for you to sort of combine those things, become a triathlete, and then there's an opportunity there. And because it's not offered at a lot of high schools, that's also uh, another opportunity for you to get involved in it, kind of on the side of whatever you were doing before. Yeah, get better at your sport, to see if you can get to the collegiate level or just participate at a regular collegiate sport. But here's an opportunity to say, hey, you know what, let me look into this uh, other area. Now, I also feel a little bit like some of the emerging sports are a little elitist. I don't know too many people that are gonna be in the equestrian arena, but there are opportunities out there. And so for the triathlon, for example, there's USA Triathlon. It's a group, an organization that's trying to grow it so that they can get uh, from emerging at the collegiate level to a regular uh, collegiate sport. And so if you contacted them, they can probably tell you where locally you can get involved, start learning about it a little bit more. And this is for every income level. So it's not like it's closed off. It's just not usual. You think of triathlon, cycling, just in itself, the type of bike you may need to do that. And same thing with swimming. Um, you know, long distance running is not a big deal. But you know, the, the, some you know, equestrian, there's not a lot of people that are around horses and it costs a lot of money to kind of get involved with that and the equipment that's required for it. But it's not that they are not allowing you to do it. You just have to find the organizations that are in charge. So again, these are opportunities for you, something to think about. You know, for us, it's about you knowing what's available because college is really expensive. And if you can get there and get involved in something early on, you are likely to stick out a little bit longer because you have such a support system around you. Hey guys, so I want to bring those up. Take a look. Go, you know, look on the internet. Find out more about it. Find the organizations that are behind it. See if you can contact them, and maybe it fits what you're trying to do. Especially if you're not the top top uh, participant in your particular sport, the sport that you love, but you're pretty good at it. If you can combine that with some other things, maybe that'll get you where you need to be. Same thing with, uh, you know, I, I was mentioning the acrobat and tumbling. You know, if you're a cheerleader or something, it's another avenue for you to look at. There's, there are, cheerleading is a sport at the NCAA level, but if you can do the acrobatic and tumbling, and same thing with gymnastics, maybe you're not the top top, but, you know, the, the uh, tumbling and acrobatics, it's a different team. They're doing different things. It's competition, and you can get a uh, scholarship for it and get somebody to help you offset some of the costs of going to college. All right, guys, I want to bring that up. Stay tuned. At the end of this, I'll give you the uh, code and the uh, instructions so that you can go ahead, use our system. It's there for you guys. We do not overcharge. We're hoping that you can use us. And if you like us, you'll continue on with it. That's great. But we want to make sure it's accessible to everybody at every income level. Um, and we don't, you know, we don't want to discriminate at any point. We just want, if you want to keep playing, we want to be there to help you move forward and keep you in the game. Talk to you guys later. Best of luck to all of you.